their secret tale that would make your blood. Yeah. <laughs> the northern lights have seen queer sights. But the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge. I, what? Anybody know? Cremated Sam. <laughs> Strange things are done in the midnight sun. My father loved Robert Service and Robert Burns. And I asked him, how'd you have time to learn all those poems? He said, well, if men would spend as much time as I have staring at the south end of a northbound mule, they'd know what I know. Have time to think about it, or the north end of the southbound mule. I'm going to introduce, I've been asked to introduce attorney Nathan McPherson. I say McPherson. I don't know if I get it exactly right, but there is no fear in McPherson. <laughs> I was said, and he has corrected me on it. I know Nathan's father, and I first met him. It's been many years ago now. I was with his father. We were defending two people in federal court for attempted murder and extortion charges. My client, husband and wife, my client was a grandmother that never even had traffic tickets. It's a false charge. Nathan, during the trial, was two weeks in federal court, and Nathan was not a lawyer then. And when it came time for the closing arguments, he gave me what he thought would be a good closing argument. And I looked at it and I said, hey, this is pretty good. And I used substantially most of it. And then he went to law school and now I'm learning from him. He's one of the few men younger than me that I'm comfortable learning from. <laughs> but it's at a certain age, you've got to find younger people. <laughs> and that's where I am. Anyway, Nathan has given his mind to this subject he uh, understands uh, the fundamentals of the law, and it is the fundamentals that are being ignored here. Mm -hmm. The fundamentals, those things that never change. And Nathan's gonna talk about those things, and uh, I may say a few words too. So I give you the floor, Mr. Nathan, say your last name. McPherson. McPherson, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, we're gonna revisit the, the original question, why we are here, I have the list, and how do we get the federal government out of education? That'll be discussed here. How do we control our children's future, their education? We've covered a little bit of that, but that also falls under the law. How do I ensure my children are taught true values and not indoctrinated? That went back to the question, what is the purpose of education? I was discussing with this gentleman. Uh, that uh, when, when did you go to school, what decade? Did you go to school? Yeah. 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 I graduated in the 50s. In the 50s, okay, and that's where you learned to use the iPhone we were discussing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you <laughs> need to have 21st century skills and learn how to use it and read the iPhone manual rather than the classics like the poem he recited, right? Yeah. And when I went to school, I may look really young, but the iPhone wasn't out until I was out of law school. Yet. My son was born. So, uh, how do we make the government accountable for the money? We, talked about the money. Of course, they're getting a lot more money from Bill Gates. What is the Common Core? I think we pretty much covered that. In, is Alaska doing the Common Core? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. Now, why is it such a struggle to get through? We touched on that, but we'll revisit that subject. Some of the quotes, the rigorous standards and so forth. Confusion. You read that paragraph? Remember that Representative Reinbold had it up? It was just confusing. Uh, why is it so confusing? Well, that's the intent. How can we stop it? And we'll get to that, but it's all about local control. Has it been tested? The answer to that question, has this stuff been tested? No. 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 And 
how much would it cost and how would we get this back to local control. So we'll discuss that. Actually, the cost, I checked out a couple of private Christian schools in the Matsu and they cost about $3,000 a kid a year. One of them was like $230 a month per kid and you get a discount if you have more kids. And I said, but you're getting funding from the church or from somewhere else, right? No, that's it. Alaska, like I said, Representative Reinbold had told me it's 16 to 20,000. I just talked to another representative yesterday at the Capitol and she said it's north of 20,000 a year. So where does that, yeah. How does that add up? Yeah, good question. How does that add up? <laughs> New roofs every year. Yeah, you've heard audit the Fed, let's audit education, right? Mm -hmm. So we know why you all are here. Why am I here? That's my dad, he mentioned my dad. And when I was born, he went up to Anchorage. I'm from Phoenix originally. He tried three cases back to back, criminal attacks, won all three of them, Patriots and Action members. Uh, he went on to represent other people in Alaska, one of whom is the only guy I know of who was ever charged with failure to file an Alaska income tax return in about 1983. Remember the income tax was repealed in 1980. He won that case because the good Anchorage jury, unfortunately. <laughs> when you're before like, a Los Angeles jury, you don't have quite the same laws. And also my mother, when I was a little kid, was fighting the infiltration of secular humanism in the schools in Arizona. They flew in administrators from Chicago to take over the schools in Arizona. And that's where we got the secular humanism. Of course, Arne Duncan was a Chicago school administrator introduced a lot of interesting programs. Uh, most of you would probably find objectionable, certainly Father Michael would find it objectionable. In what he did in Chicago, now he's of course the head of the US DOE pushing this on Alaska and the other states. Uh, my mother's parents were elementary school teachers and, and high school um, math and English teachers in public schools in Pennsylvania. My grandmother actually taught English to the Pontoff family. Anybody remember that Sound of Music? Mm -hmm. yeah. came over. So, you know, I have a long history in education as well. My mom has a degree in elementary education also. And well, another reason I'm here is my family, my wife, my three boys, Noah, Ethan, and Luke. And that's why we moved up to Alaska, that state and just outside of Anchorage, was for the educational freedom to not register my kids and be able to homeschool. Nobody wants to register your guns, you want to register your kids. I didn't. You want to have your kids forced to take these tests, and you know, in Alaska, you can uh, independently homeschool, and you're not yet forced to take the test. In other states, you have to take these tests, no matter what. There's no choice for anybody. And then, of course, I feel it's my duty. This is the first Continental Congress. That it's my duty before God to speak the truth, and that's also one of the reasons I asked my friend Brent to come up here. I met the representative. Uh, down in the Mat Sioux and got involved in this, just volunteered and said, hey, I like what you're doing. That's one of the reasons I came to Alaska. Can I help? So she said, sure, you can come speak. And so I asked my friend Brent to come out. Brent, do you want to briefly discuss how far you came? You didn't have a far to come, though. You live on the next island over. Right. <laughs> I came 4,000 miles to be here, and I've never been here before. And uh, I like it here. You folks are fascinating. Strange things are done in the midnight sun. <laughs> no question about that. But uh, I came here. I have uh, Susan and I have eight children, and now we have some grandchildren. And this, the Common Core thing, is a a representative sample of the madness in which we now swim. And it is an inundation. And it is lawlessness. I speak as a lawyer. I don't know everything, but I know chaos when I see it. This is chaos. <laughs> Common core is subversion. And we saw a while ago the definitions of rigor had to do with questioning assumptions. Is there anything wrong with questioning assumptions? Yes, there is when you're trying to learn how to think. When we get older, you can question those assumptions, as I have done every person off to. But when you're young and you're a child, you're three or four years, four or five or six years old, you need to listen to your teachers. You need to learn to think. And without assumptions, you cannot think. Facts are the building blocks <clears throat> upon which logic must occur. And if you teach children to, well, I don't know if that's true, they'll never, you never get past doubt and they'll never get on thinking. Tell me, I tried it. I went through some of this. This is not new. 
as far back as I can trace it now, it began in 1957, probably goes back a lot further. Well, I know it does in many other ways, but solidly Common Core goes back to 57. That's the United Nations plan. It isn't something that just all of a sudden popped up. It's been in the oven for a long time, and it has to do with making things uniform. Now, if there's anything Alaskans aren't, they're not uniform. <laughs> and therein lies the beauty of the great white north. White in the sense of snow, not in the sense of people, because clearly not everybody here is white in the sense of ethnicity. And what a wonderful thing that is we as Americans have experienced as no other nation in the history of the world has experienced. Do you think that we have become the engine of wealth likened to no other people in the history of the world because of our diversity? Common Core is not about diversity. Common core is about a common will. That's what core means, as he said long ago. Coor. Oh, there it is. We have a place at home called Creve Coeur because the French got there first. We got a place up in Idaho called Coeur de Lane. Coeur de Lane. Did I say it right? Heart. What is the heart? Even in the ancient writings, the heart always refers to the will, or some people would say the desire. They want a common will in every child, in every person. And that will is called law. Because law is somebody's will in every instance. Could be the legislature's will, what it is in the states for that jurisdiction. Could be a dictator's will. Could be the law of a father. Could be a father's will. How are you going to say that? <laughs> Whose will are we talking about here? Want a common core, a common desire, a common will in every person? Is that diversity? No. You say one thing and you do another. Isn't that what politics often is about? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, what does it mean to be a noble in Europe? It means to say one thing while you're thinking quite another. It's, it's subversion. It's underneath. That's what we don't want. Freedom means that we aren't all of the same will, of the same desire. Freedom means you have a choice. You exercise your will, your volition. I may not agree with you, but I don't know everything. I'm not God and neither are you. Yeah. And I'll tell you for sure, the people in the state house aren't. Yeah. I've talked to some of them. I even ran for public office once when somebody said to me, Brent, when you get your name on the ballot, you'll automatically lose 30 IQ points. <laughs> and I thought, that's ridiculous. That was not ridiculous. It really happened. <laughs> yeah. In one sense. But that's why I think it is important that we not allow the force. That's what government is, by the way. It's force. It's power. It's raw power. Yeah, it's necessary. It has its place. But don't let it dictate to you. And he's going to point out that the Supreme Court of the United States has said, and rightly said, rightly said, that parents have the responsibility of choice for the education of their children. And in the final analysis, parents must make that choice. And again, that's the beauty and the power of our country. Don't ever forget it. Ultimately, all of this education is about securing the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, the purpose of the Constitution, that's the preamble of the Constitution. And that was one of the, how do I control my son's future education? How do I ensure my children are taught true values and not indoctrinated? All about the future of our children. You want your children to be free, right? Not to grow up under communism, Marxism, socialism, or any other hidden. And I often ask this question, what's, what's in my hand? Not a trick question. You can feel bottle of water. And that's because I really wanted some plastic, right? <laughs> now what do I want then? Water. Why do I have a bottle? Yeah, otherwise the water is useless, right? It would be on the ground. Yeah. So the water, the bottle provides the structure and that is the constitution provides the structure, the due process of law by which we have liberty. And remember, it's to secure our rights that governments are instituted among men. 
Declaration of Independence. That's why we have Representative Reinbold and the others is to secure our rights. Well, unfortunately, the Common Core violates, subverts, and usurps. We have the Alaska Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, federal and state statutes. Representative Reinbold earlier showed you the state statute, Alaska statute, she got passed last year, prohibiting the spending of money on the Common Core. What's happening right now? What are, on what is he spending money? Wait, that's not, uh, that's not law. That's lawlessness, isn't it? It's against state law, and yet they're doing it. It's against the Constitution, and yet they're doing it. It's against the federal statutes, we'll show. Not only that, not only does it break the law, but it subverts our Constitution. It subverts the very framework by which we have our liberty. And I'll show that a little bit later. And then it's also usurping, as we've pretty much seen, parental rights and state sovereignty. Because all of you agreed you wanted your kids taught Common Core, right? Okay, it was Representative Reinbold and, and the other legislators who decided we're gonna have this testing, right? No, I don't know. No, so wait, it wasn't the parents, and it wasn't the state legislature. No. So who was it? Government. Federal government <laughs> and the United Nations, right? Because <clears throat> we saw how the federal government is forcing it upon the state through the U.S. Department of Education money under the Elementary and Secondary Education Act waiver, they make all these acronyms to make it difficult, but bottom line is federal government says, we're gonna give the states money, if you do what we say. The state executive has, has said, sure, give me the money. So Brent's gonna discuss a little bit, why does the Constitution matter? We, we already recognize, I want the water, I don't want the plastic, right? But I can't have water without the plastic. If we take away this bottle, the water is on the floor in the carpet, evaporating, it's gone. Evaporating just like our rights are, just like our liberty is without the Constitution. So in 1842, a young judge got the idea he was gonna to try to find out what motivated the ragtag American colonists who were underfed, ill-equipped uh, to square off and dare the odds with their lives against the best trained and most efficient, best fed, best equipped military forces in the world at that time, British regulars and German Hessians. He thought, how did they, why, how, what, why would a man do something like, why would a group of men do something like that? And he found this old fellow, who was 91 years old, who was, his name was Captain Preston, and he was a member of the militia, and he was at the historic Battle of Concord. And so he gained an interview with this old militiaman, and he said, uh, were you oppressed by intolerable oppressions? He said, oppressions? I didn't feel any. He said, well, what about the Stamp Act? And the old man said, I never saw one of those stamps. I certainly never paid a penny for one. He said, well, what about the tea tax? He said, tea tax? He said, I never drank a drop of the stuff. The boys threw it all overboard. And he thought, well, maybe he's an intellectual. So he said, I suppose you'd been reading Harrington and Sidney and Locke about the eternal principles of liberty. He said, I never heard of them. He said, we only read the Bible, the catechism, watched psalms and hymns and the uh, farmer's song. He said, well, what was the matter? What did you mean going to the fight? He said, young man, what we meant in going for those redcoats was this. We had always governed ourselves, and we always meant to. They didn't mean that we should. They, those people way far away, thousands of miles. Well, you can say that in Alaska, Washington, D.C. is thousands of miles away, further than England was at that time. But if you think about what he said there, he made a point that comes up again in the Declaration of 76, one of our organic documents by Declaration of Congress the laws of nature and the laws of nature and God. The laws of nature, Blackstone tells us, is our common law unwritten. Our first Congress, 1774, said that they were willing to fight. By resolution, we are willing to fight for the inestimable rights of our common law, and most importantly, the inestimable right of the right to trial by jury, which is part of our common law. Our common law. 
Our Constitution of the United States, watch me close on this and don't miss this. <laughs> People say, oh, I believe the Constitution ought to be followed. And my question to them is, why? What's the Constitution? But here's why. And the Supreme Court has said this over and over. The truth is buried. It's not talked about. It should be. The Supreme Court has said that the Constitution of the United States is written in the language of the common law. Its principles are couched in its phrases. And if a fellow doesn't understand something about our common law, he doesn't understand our Constitution. It is the laws of nature, our common law is. Now, to define our common law, our common law is only known in adversity, only when there's a fight. Then it arises and it's defined, as also is due process. Now, watch me close on this. Our common law is not a list of laws. It is not a list of laws. Our common law is different than every other country in the world. Our common law is due process. That's, that's, I don't want to say that's all it is, but that is what it is. And our Supreme Court has rightly said they hit the nail with their head on this one. They have said that Article 6 of our Constitution this Constitution says that the supreme law of our land, that phrase, law of the land, lifted direct out of Magna Carta, Lex Terra in the Latin, it's, that's the way Langton wrote it there. Law of the land is the old phrase meaning due process. The law of the land is our common, the law of the land is our common law. Okay, got it. Process, I believe. Oh, due process, yes. Our common law is due process. Our Constitution is not a list of laws. Our Constitution is a course of action. How? It, it puts and implements a course in place that says this is how government has to function in order to pass laws, in order to do this. It's a process that must be followed. And if we follow the process, the result, the truth ratifies. But if we don't follow the process, we try to do an end run by executive orders. That's tyranny. And that's what our Constitution says. The Constitution binds uh, those that work for government to a certain course of action and guarantees it to us. And that's why, what's up here? Why does the Constitution matter? Some people say the Constitution, just keep in mind, it matters because it is our most recent and one of the best expressions we've ever had of the laws of nature. Magna Carta was a good one. Magna Carta was written to reestablish the laws of King Alfred, which was another expression of our common law. The laws of King Alfred then were re-expressed under the laws of Edward the Confessor. Then 150 years later, we get, the Magna, we get Magna Carta. The Scottish Covenants came after that. All of these expressions were re-expressions to try to re-establish something that had been lost in our Constitution. It was not written out of whole cloth. It was an attempt to re-establish something that had been lost. And we are a common law country, and our Constitution has fixed it in writing in a way, no, it has never happened before. And uh, we're one of the few countries left that has this mandatory process that government must follow to make law. And that's why it matters. And so when he talks about the Constitution, keep in mind that this is a law of nature which has been proven over centuries. It works and it retains our freedoms. We are not to seek a goal. We are to be process oriented and let the chips fall where they may. The ends does not justify the means. That The Constitution is the means of establishing our standards. Not some experts in far off Washington, D.C. That's why the Constitution <laughs> uh, somebody would turn to the back of the first page, slide seven and eight. What does the Supreme Court have to say about the Constitution? Does it agree with what you just said? Bottom, bottom left, slide number seven. Anybody want to read the operative words? The most important, the essence of that quote from the Supreme Court. The Constitution is what? The supreme law of the land. The supreme law of the land. That's what Attorney Brent Winters said, or 
That's what that U.S. means, that this is a U.S. Supreme Court case, that our Supreme Court of the United States said that the Constitution is the supreme law law. And what did they say in 1957? Does the United States as a country, as a republic of the United States, exist without the Constitution? No. So what happens to my water, remember, without the bottle? It's on the ground. It's going to go on the ground, and after the ground, it's going to absorb the latent heat of evaporation. I didn't go to a common core school, but I still remember that. That's going to make it evaporate and basically disappear. I mean, stay somewhere in the earth, but you don't have it here anymore. What happens without our Constitution? What happens to our republic? It disappears. It ceases to exist. So anybody who attacks the Constitution is doing what? Yes. Attacking our country. That's why I, as an attorney, Brent, as an attorney, Representative Reinbold as a representative. Anybody here as a public official? Anybody else in the room? Work for the government, so to speak? Basically working for us? We all took an oath to defend the Constitution <coughs> because we took an oath to defend our republic. And she, as a state official, also took an oath to defend the Alaska Constitution because without that, Alaska is not a state. So I think we've pretty much settled that. This case, we'll get the Prince versus U.S. again, but it's talking about two spheres. So we all at least heard the notion of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches, right? <coughs> Are they triune equal, or is any one of them above the other? Equal. Equal. That's what everybody's taught, but that's not what the founding fathers said. <coughs> so I don't blame you for for saying that. I expected that because that's what everybody's taught. Actually, the legislative branch is supposed to be the highest because yeah. they write the laws. Yeah. And what is the solution to lawlessness, Brent? Law. Law. Who writes the law? Legislative. Legislative. Not the executive. Now, we heard earlier about these administrative regulations where the executive is claiming to write law, and that's why she mentioned that a lot of people have a problem with that. I'd say our founding fathers, if they were here today, would have a problem with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the executive is to write law. That's the power we, the people, delegated under the Constitution to the government. We said the executive, or the legislative writes the laws. The executive carries out the laws in the courts and courts. So what are these two spheres? We have three branches, so what are the two spheres? Any guesses? Yes, ma'am? State and federal. Exactly. So why do we have a Republic of the United States that is separate from the state of Alaska, California, etc.? To protect our liberty. What do they have in other countries? I lived in Germany. I worked in Germany as a lawyer. It's a federal republic. My wife's from Brazil. It's a federal republic. They don't have this separation. Yes, sir. This is just kind of the structure of that kind of a philosophy. Where do we take uh, the uh, movement that's going on today to uh, exempt states from having to, to uh, enforce federal law? Okay, so how do we, your question was, how do we exempt states from having to We're enforce back into a federal, federal law? Area. And that's what I'll be covering here. It's not even an exemption. The no. Supreme Court no. prohibits it. So you want to, okay, you're asking the practical steps? No, no, or, no. I'm talking about Or legally. Movement that's going on at the present time to. Uh, um, oh, you don't mean in this room, you mean this that's in the news, the 10th uh, Amendment yeah, movement? In other words, uh, the uh, nullification part. Nullification? Yeah, like the states enacting legislation saying we're not going to enforce or allow the enforcement of federal gun laws. Yeah, we've gone through that in the 1840s. We don't do it again in the 1860s. We're going to do it again. <laughs> yeah, I hope we don't have to do it in the same way. <laughs> Uh, especially considering I have children, I'd like to keep things using words yeah. because, but, yeah. You know, a lot of people who say that they're strong supporters of the Constitution are talking about uh, nullification of federal law. So that, that regulation doesn't apply to us, we don't apply to us right now. Exactly, and I believe the Supreme Court gives us a process to do that peacefully. So I'll, I'll be further getting into that. That's an excellent point because that, that is the point of this is that we have two spheres <coughs> states. So we the people gave a lot of 
various powers to the state government, a lot being relative term compared to the few enumerated powers we gave to the federal government. In other Supreme Court case, maybe in the notes, is that we the people have all the powers and then we gave some to the state, some to the federal. So th this is the laundry list. These three federal statutes are the ones that say that the federal government does not have jurisdiction over education as far as assessments, standards, curriculum. It's kind of odd that they pass a statute saying we don't have jurisdiction over this matter. Just by even saying that, they're sort of exercising jurisdiction. But in any event, we don't need to even worry about abolishing the Department of Education. Respecting this discussion of common core today, you don't even have to do that because the DEOA is the Department of Education Organizing Act of 1979 passed when Carter was in office, he pushed for it. And that statute in the beginning and all of the legislative discussions that were recorded as to why they're passing that say that parents have the primary duty to educate their children, the states have a duty to help the parents and the federal government, the reason we're doing this is just to help them, but no matter what, we're not going to do standards, assessments, curriculum. Nothing in this act is construed to give us that power, and that mirrored the language in the GIPA and the ASEA, General Education Protection Act, sounds pretty cool, right, we're going to protect general education, we'll do harmed it, and then the Elementary and Secondary Education Act is discussed, and that's the act through which the federal funds flow. Both of those, so all three of those, say, we can't tell you what to do. We, the federal government, may not tell you, the states and the parents, what to do as far as standards, assessments, curriculum. But what was the language Representative Reinbold had up there from the Department of Education to Commissioner Hanley? Here's all the stuff you got to do. You got to do these tests to make sure that they're aligned to these standards and assessments and curriculum tests or assessments to get our money. That's clearly in violation. <laughs> Federal, isn't, I mean, am I missing something here? I don't think I am because the former general counsel, that's the number one attorney, and the deputy general counsel, the number two attorney at the U.S. Department of Education mm -hmm. under Bush II, wrote a paper saying, this is executive tyranny. Congress passed these laws saying federal government can't do this. The executive branch under Obama is now doing this. Mm -hmm. It's executive tyranny. <clears throat> And now we have the state legislature pass the law saying you can't spend money on Common Core. And we have Commissioner Hanley and his department spending money on Common Core. That's the same executive tyranny, isn't it? Am I missing something? No. And of course, we'll get to some other constitutional violations. So starting with the 10th Amendment, that's sort of what the gentleman in the back was saying, the structure of the federal government forcing the states to do things. The 10th Amendment reads what, sir? You in a nutshell, what is the 10th Amendment? I don't want to put you on the spot. You know. <coughs> it's the, that whatever powers we didn't delegate. Exactly. So we the people or the states have the powers that aren't enumerated to the federal government. Of course, if we go to the turn to your constitution, the article PS says <laughs> education is one of the powers we delegated, right? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about though. It's Let's just ask President Thomas Jefferson, what did he say about it? Now, was he in favor of public education? Can you tell from this quote he's there? He was in favor of it, but what did he say? So we're, let's do it. it. Sounds like a good thing. I'm the President of the United States. He's talking to the U.S. House and Senate over in <laughs> D.C. And he said, hey, it's a great idea. Let's do it. He said, we can't do it. Why isn't our current president reading this? Why doesn't our <laughs> Even Congress agrees. Even those people down in DC, the other people, <coughs> say we can't do this. Now we have the executive implementing it. Well, Anybody in here remember the switch in time that saved nine? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So we have this Butler case, which remember we read from that earlier about the Constitution being the supreme law of the land. <laughs> he also has, you've heard this quote, it comes in various forms. This is the one from this case, but 
power to tax and the power to destroy, the power to confer or withhold unlimited benefit. In other words, to say, I'll give you this money if you do what I say, is the power to coerce or to destroy, which is what's happening, right? The states are being coerced into doing the common core, which is now destroying them. So this guy wrote that opinion that said the federal government can't do that. It's illegal. They may not tie the money to complying with things they have no authority to do. So if you're building a highway, and you want federal highway money, you have to put in a speed limit. Why? Because the Supreme Court has said that the federal government has jurisdiction over interstate highways. That may be questionable, but the Supreme Court said so. And so they can condition the money. But the Supreme Court here says where they don't have authority to act, and it's clear from federal statute that the federal government has no authority to act. They may not force the states to do it. And this isn't the only case that says that. So the interesting thing you see here, government reorganization. And what, what was the common core all about? Reform? Yeah. Supreme Court revision. We had a slew of cases from about this time uh, on through you know, my life revising the Constitution. We're blessed to have these cases that actually <laughs> acted by it. What's this one up here? Dictator. Who do you think the dictator is? What what branch of government? Executive. Yeah. So he was the switch in time to save nine. For those who don't remember the story, FDR ushered in the raw, I mean the New Deal, <laughs> and wanted to do all these great socialist things, and the Supreme Court was saying, made life, for instance, in this case right here, FDR, the executive, wanted to do things that were unconstitutional. They were forcing the states to do it. And he wrote the majority opinion saying, no, you can't do that. FDR got pretty mad. And he said, I'm going to boot you guys out of there. You're going to be replaced. I'm going to dilute you. He was the guy who switched and started saying, oh, no, you can do that, which was the Supreme Court revision this article's talking about, this cartoon's talking about. He switched in time to save the nine Supreme Court justices. He started to go along with it. And that's where we got the Supreme Court revision, starting back in 1937, and here we are, 2015, with a dictator, basically. Anybody recognize that guy? Somebody in your mind. Yeah. Sheriff Mack? So he sued the federal government, remember, he sued the Clinton administration. In the 90s on the Brady Bill, he had the waiting period to get a gun, and the sheriff was supposed to do a background check, so that probably didn't quite happen up here with all the sheriffs, but he was in Arizona, where I'm from, he's from Graham County. Prince was a sheriff down in Montana, and the two of them took it to court, lost, took it to the Ninth Circuit, lost, took it up to the Supreme Court, and won. This case stands for the proposition that the federal government may not direct the executive of a state to do things where the federal government has no jurisdiction, such as assessments, curriculum, and standards in education. Well, who is implementing the Common Core in Alaska? Which branch? The, the executive branch of the state government, right? It's the executive branch of the federal government telling the executive branch of the state what to do, and that says executive action can't do this. But hey, we need the money, right? So they can't force us to do it, but let's just take the money, right? You shaking your head, no, you are, you know? Where this is going. <laughs> School. I would like to know. May the state legislature or the state executive agree to this? What's the, what does the Supreme Court say? Can they ratify it? Do they have the authority to ratify it? When they do it, when they accept the money and implement Common Core, what are they doing? Breaking the law. Breaking the law. <coughs> Breaking the law. This is the Supreme Court saying, this is our 10th Amendment right. We, the people, have the 10th Amendment right. And the, the cases are clear. There are several of them. In the handouts you see, starting from even before the Butler case, but from the 1920s up, up to the 1990s, the, the cases are clear from the Supreme Court. We, the people, hold the Tenth Amendment power. The state may not agree with the federal government to violate that. And why? Remember what the 
separation of the two spheres ensures liberty. And in your handouts, you'll see the quote from the Supreme Court. It's to protect us against tyranny. So anything that is written in statute that says you're going to do common core, that law? No. no. Supreme Court says what? Yeah. Valid cannot be enforced because this is power reserved to the states. Brent, did you want to discuss briefly the compacts clause? Anybody heard of that? No. Even I hadn't remembered that one, uh, the Constitution. <laughs> so okay. There's a, no, go ahead, yeah, there's something good about this, right? You know, the reason Nathan says he doesn't remember it because it's hardly ever mentioned. But it's there, and I'm amazed at the foresight of those that drafted the Constitution that they put it there. It says, no state shall. That's a future. It's talking about what will happen in the future. No state, state shall without the consent of the Congress of the United States, those are the boys in Washington, D.C., and girls now, <laughs> enter into any agreement or compact, E word, with another state <laughs> without the consent of Congress. Just recently, down in the state of Missouri, a state court ruled that Common Core violates this because it is, they said, a consortium. It's another big word. Yeah, Sawyer versus Nixon. I think Nixon was some big shot in government down there. It wasn't Richard. I don't even know if he's related, but. The court finds that SBAC is an unlawful interstate compact to which the United States Congress has never consented, whose existence and operation violate the compact clause of the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3. By the way, that's the last clause in Article 1. It's like they stuck it in there just to make it obvious. As well as numerous federal statutes. I think you're going to talk about that, aren't you? <coughs> It's not like this is a matter of opinion, friends, neighbors, and relatives. When Nathan brought all this stuff forward and I was able to see it, my eyes got big and I said, wow, lawlessness. The law is clear. <laughs> and that Missouri's participation at an SBAC as a member is unlawful under state and federal law. I want to I want to meet this judge. I've never met the man. I don't know who wrote this. <clears throat> it's a state case. And when people sue in state court, if it's a federal question, in other words, a constitutional question, all federal questions about have to be constitutional. Not all, but usually. If it's a federal question, somebody stu sues in state court, almost immediately, one of the parties will remove the case to federal court. You don't ask permission. If it's a federal question, if you want it over in federal court, you just do it. They didn't do that here. And I had, had to ask myself why. The only thing I can think is that it scared them a little bit and they don't want to make a, as we used to say, a federal case out of it. <laughs> <laughs> they used to say that when you were ch growing up too. <laughs> That's what we used to say. Yeah, I'll make a federal case out of this one. Well, they didn't want that. Because then it will become more visible. Of course, there's always some lawyer like Nathan will make it visible. Mm -hmm. So here it is visible. But one state is not allowed to make an agreement with another. When I begin to look at what he had found out about Common Core, I said, this is a conspiracy. This, friends, neighbors, and relatives, is a conspiracy. This meets the definition of conspiracy of law. Don't be afraid of the word conspiracy. People get prosecuted in court all day, every day for conspiracy. It's always the same. They conspired. That means they agreed to do something that was unlawful. That's the very definition of law of conspiracy. And our Constitution forbids it. That's what makes it unlawful. <clears throat> we had a big war about this once. 600,000 people got killed over this. You remember this from American history or do they, do they teach these things? Yeah, oh yeah, this is big stuff. <coughs> but this be, is now being applied to say that 
in order to be participate in Common Core, you become a part of this agreement. And of course, you mentioned well ago, you're going to talk more. Well, I'll, I don't think you are. I'll just mention it. You can talk more about it if you need to. This is a copyrighted thing, this Common Core stuff. Of course, I'm, I don't, I'm not a patent and copyright <coughs> lawyer, but I do know in order to copyright something, a corporation cannot copyright something. On the, uh, not a corpse, but a real person, a real corpus can copyright things. So somebody copyrighted this and sold the rights to a corporation, or maybe more than one. Is there more than one? Or two. <laughs> or three. Two, okay, three. Okay. Then you must ask yourself, who are the shareholders of this corporation? They don't stand to make millions. They stand to make billions. Understand what's happening here. Parents aren't interested in the, I think about my children all day, every day. Why? Because I'm made that way. They're mine. It's called natural affection. You have it, I have it, if we don't have it, we're over the edge. I have it. I don't think about how much money I can make and I've got to make money to educate my children. And I don't want my children prostituted for money. But these folks are out to make lots of money because they're lassoing every state and every school district. I had a fellow tell me, I won't mention his name, he's sitting in this room, but it was a good point. He said there are, there are four, how many school districts are there in this state? Anybody know? 56. 56? They want it. The Common Core wants to make one school district out of the state of Alaska. You see? And they want to make one school district out of the whole country. Mm -hmm. Something wrong with that. But what drives people to do that? Because they care about children? No. no. I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> I, I do know that there is money at stake in this. Much money. But this compact clause, it's amazing, the foresight of those that wrote our Constitution to stop these kind of things. Remember that Governor Parnell and Commissioner Hanley got us into SBAC, Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium. And now Alaska's in a similar thing with the University of Kansas. Representative Reinbold covered that earlier. So Alaska was in SBAC and is now in something that's practically identical to it that this judge has held to be unconstitutional and in violation of federal law. Lawlessness. <laughs> so we know the two amendments covered here. One of them's obvious, what's the other one? Any of them, anybody, any takers? Give away a book maybe. <laughs> this is about which part of the Constitution? Even name the Alaska section. Fourth Amendment's sort of the most obvious, and it took me a little while, but Brent was pushing forward to the Third Amendment, which somebody in here earlier was telling me you gotta have now federal agents on your fishing boats. Oh, right? yeah. Right? <laughs> Observers, yeah, yeah. Observers. It's like, and that's like the quartering soldiers in your house prohibited by the Third Amendment. Yeah. Same thing. Well, what was that about? Was it because you don't want to give them free room and board? No. Why, why do you not want them on your boat? And pay them, and <laughs> house them, and give them a place to sleep. But what are they do? What are they there to do? Help you out? Because they, they, they don't want to do anything for me. Spy on them, right? <laughs> yeah. And is there anything more insidious than somebody spying on you inside of your house? Ooh. What if you had armed government agents sitting at your dining room table as you're having breakfast with your kids, having dinner, talking about family business? That's what the Third Amendment was about. And that's exactly what's happening with these tests. How much did your mom, how much weight did she gain? <laughs> Open up your medicine cabinet, what's in there? Do your parents drink, how much? Do you think they drink too much? Do you like your mom and dad? These are some of the questions. Do you have a gun in your house? You can't even take your kid to the pediatrician, can you, without being asked? Or did they ask that up here too? How do you know those are some of the questions? My brothers had them in the public schools. That's why my parents started fighting this back in the early 80s. I've been asked. I took in my son, he was born with pneumonia, went into the neonatal intensive care. When he got out, I took him to the pediatrician in California. 
and the doctor, the first question was, do you have guns at your house? I stopped going with that doctor and I moved to Alaska. <laughs> he didn't even diagnose that we had a mold infestation, and that's why my son almost died. He was more concerned whether we have guns at our house. Yeah. And that's this upcoming testing is all these questions. It's not questions what's one plus one. It has that. But it has more questions that violate our privacy rights. And the state legislature has an affirmative duty under the Constitution of Alaska to protect our privacy. Well, so where does this all come from? <coughs> this is the quote that Representative had up earlier. Does this bother any of you, or do you like this? It's okay? Yeah. <laughs> Just think about what are they tracking? Just the grades they're getting? The grades aren't good enough for them? I mean, that not that? Yeah. What else do they want to know besides the grades? Anything. Your world view. Anything. World view, yeah. That's Anything. Anything. Yeah, baptism. Yeah. And one, one thing that's kind of interesting, linking the baptism certificate, the, the database tracks your mother's maiden name. Anybody know of a religion that passes through the mother? Yes, there's a had anything ever happened to them before? It's called genocide, isn't it? Yes. I, you know, I don't have proof that that's about that, but that just kind of stuck out at me. I saw that. It's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Earnings as an adult. So most, if not everybody in here, graduated from school at some point, right? Did you ever go back to your teachers and tell them, hey, I'm making 50 grand, 100 grand, or 500,000 a year? So how did they know? How is, how is, this is the U.S. Secretary of Education. How is he going to track your earnings as an adult? Well, you remember, beat IRS, I'm a tax defense attorney, so I keep on top of what the Commissioner of Internal Revenue is doing. They come out with a strategic plan every two years. What's he talking about? What's the IRS doing? Finding out how much you're making to yeah. tax you, or is he doing other stuff? Yeah, how much they can charge you to work. They, they're also asking questions like how many toilets do you have and this and the other and then they share that information with companies that sell and they do percentages like one and a half uh, couples on the car blah 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 and they share that information and sell it if they get yes and there's a, one of these data collection agencies for the schools is in federal bankruptcy court that's kind of a redundancy because there's only federal bankruptcy court but anyway the asset that's being sold by the trustee in the bankruptcy is the database of the student data. That's being sold off to pay off creditors, most likely to pay off the trustee, because I had that happen in the case where the amount of money collected was the amount of the legal fees that the trustee has gone off. Exactly. But that's another story. So notice with whom they're partnering, not only with the state of Alaska and the other states, but international. Yeah. 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 So I get these emails from the IRS also, you know, because my tax practice. This one came out right before we spoke over, as I guess, uh, Delta Junction and Fairbanks. They, they launched this International Data Exchange Service. This is pursuant, if you go to the IRS website or the government uh, accounting office, they say we have treaties with various other countries pursuant to which we are doing this international data sharing. That's where it goes from not just, it's not just Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is doing it because they're controlled by, obviously not our votes, but somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that would be from here. No one should be invisible. So like she said, even if you are independently homeschooled, you're still not invisible because we want a world that counts. We want universal registration and proof of registration by 2030. This is for sustainable development because we can't sustainably develop if we don't register all the people, which gets you to wonder, wait a minute. I thought development was like building buildings. Why do they need all of the humans to be registered with civil authorities to make sure that our development is sustainable? That gets into some pretty scary thoughts. That's scary. But this is the world that we want anyway, right? Is this the world that we want? No. no. So you're not one of these people. They say this is 
Isn't that why we all came up to Alaska to be registered and counted and on the radar? <laughs> Boy, the people in Della Junction got pretty riled up about it. You don't live in Della Junction if you don't be registered. So on to a lighter topic. I'm, unfortunately, the father's no longer here. <laughs> He was supposed to, this was the thing he was supposed to say exactly where this is and what this is. So who, who knows what this is? Russian Orthodox Church. Where? It's not the one here, unfortunately. I should have changed the slide to be this. Is it St. Michael's? But anybody guess? Which one is this? Ninelchik. Ninelchik? Ninelchik. Supposedly the most famous in Alaska. Maybe the outsiders. So, Common Core, besides all the other stuff we've been talking about, the First Amendment, which is religious freedom. And, Brent, you want to define the First Amendment again? Because there are a lot of misnomers. Do we need to build a wall here? Oh, no. 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 <laughs> well, you just touch on the exact wording. And what the founding father said, the first time you're asking me to just to recite it as though I memorized it. I messed it up last time you asked me to do this. I missed one word. You wrote a book on it. I, I know I did. I know, I know. But I have no. Let me try it. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. The establishment of religion. And. And. Good point. Oh, so it's not, it's not, the establishment's not a verb. Well, I'm pretty, no, no. It's an adjective. I think that's right. Or no, now. No. 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 We got a grammar. I went to Common Core. Knowing whether we have subjects, verbs, nouns. Is this the grammar Nazi? <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's a very important point. It's that's right. It's a noun. People like you, I need to proofread my stuff. <laughs> Look, but, no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. I had a teacher once used to say, Congress shall not hinder or help religion. And if you help a particular sect of religion, you're hindering another sect. And if you hinder a particular <coughs> sect, you're helping another sect. Congress has no jurisdiction in such matters. Why? Because nine of the 13 states at that time had what? Anybody know? I'll give you a free book on the Constitution if you can answer this question. I got it right here. Uh, yeah. My commentary on the Constitution, according to Brent. I'll give you a free book. Why? Nine of them had what? Churches. What? Churches. What kind of churches? We have churches here. <laughs> Boy, you're getting awful close, but not close enough for the cigar. <laughs> uh, figuratively speaking. Nine of the 13 states had state-supported religion. State churches, just like they do over in England yet today. Nine of them. And they, those nine uh, states, plus the others, didn't want the federal government interfering in any way in their religious business. That's why. So the First Amendment is foremost to the Congress of the United States to neither help nor hinder. Yeah, yeah and they've done that. There's no question. Uh, what are you going to say? Yeah, it's, in other words, Congress may make no law about religion. Yeah, they have no jurisdiction to say anything. It's not, Congress may not establish a religion. Congress may not make a law about religion. No, about it. About it. And in fact, I think we talked about this on the radio. Going back even to the Babylonians, they didn't tax churches. Even even the you know secular governments never taxed churches because they felt that that was a separate sphere they didn't have jurisdiction. Did um, I hit what you wanted me to hit? Yes, I can't. That was good. Okay. So Alaska Constitution has a similar provision to the First Amendment, and then it's Article Seven, Section One. Article Seven is the education where the state legislature has a duty to establish and maintain a system of public schools, and no state money may be used for sectarian education. So Frank, you shouldn't have sat down. Oh. What is a sect? What's sectarian? Well, this is a 
this is a matter of, I'm a word man myself. I give the highest importance to words. <laughs> because where men lose the meanings of words, men lose their lives, their liberties, and their property. How do I know? Because I read history. That's axiomatic. Let me repeat that. I want you to remember it. Where men lose the meanings of words, men lose their lives, their liberties, and their properties. Did you see those mush words up there a while ago? Rigor, and then they define it as feeling and perception. It's just kind of mushy, and the words don't mean anything anymore. And what was the old rock and roll song we used to say, words sometimes have no meaning? Stairway to heaven or something? <laughs> yeah. That's some wicked stuff. But words, sound, but words do have meanings. If they don't, then law is meaningless. And when legislators draft laws, they have meanings. Um, but the word sect has meaning and sectarian. And a sect is a piece off of a larger whole. A piece off of a larger whole. So a sect, Christianity, therefore, is not a sect. And that's not the meaning of the word. A sect is a piece off of Christianity. A sect. But where are we, what was the, the context we are talking about? Oh. The state may not find. Yeah, but this comes to the Alaska Constitution, doesn't it? Yeah. That's, and that, I'm not as familiar with that as you are. He's an Alaskan. Right? So under the IDEA program, if you homeschool and get the state money and you want to use a BECA, they say no because that's sectarian. It's my understanding that a BECA is broadly Christian. It's not, you correct me if I'm wrong, it's not Mormon, it's not Lutheran, it's not Baptist, it's just Christian. And as he said, Christianity is not a sect. Christianity is the whole. We had the Father who's Orthodox. We have others, who are Lutherans, Presbyterians, Baptists, Assembly of God, you name it, right? The whole is called Christianity, so that's not sectarian. So that's being twisted around to prohibit. And we have Supreme Court cases interpreting the First Amendment that say a teacher may not read a Bible to himself during quiet time in a school because we all know the Constitution tells us what we may not do, right? <laughs> Wait a minute. So how can a teacher not be allowed to read his own Bible to himself? How do you stop it? So we, we see that these are twisted around where Christianity is denigrated and pushed out even by the U.S. Supreme Court also by the executive branch in Alaska under this Article 7 prohibiting the Becca, whereas you can and do they promote uh, in the notes you'll see humanism, which is, has been recognized as a religion for purposes of the First Amendment religious freedom clause. The Supreme Court and the Circuit Courts have said humanism is a religion, just like Islam, Christianity, etc. That is promoted, in fact, and you'll, you'll see the Ten Commitments of Humanism were signed, only has about a hundred signers. One of them was one of the authors of the Common Core Standards that are aligned to it. And then, of course, Islam is being promoted. And just read this underlying part. So you see up here, it's, it was a textbook with pro-Islam, anti-Israel bias. And what was the purpose of this textbook being used in this classroom? And by the way, our standards the same as curriculum. Our standards, what you're supposed to learn. Just remember, some people say, oh, this is common course to standards. It's not what you're learning in the classroom. What does this school official say? Say, some of you might be too low. It's part of the curriculum, and it's part of the standards you're supposed to learn. You're supposed to learn that Islam is good and Israel's bad. But that couldn't happen in Alaska, could it? <laughs> of course, we have the textbooks from South Central Alaska showing it, but let's get a little closer to home, okay? Everybody in here, I think, voted for Obama. It's kind of a feel I get. Oh. Again, this isn't partisan, but just because that ties in with here. Only the second time. Remember, the Democratic Party of Washington also did a resolution against the Common Core. The Republicans, the Democrats, the Independents, the Libertarians all have. But President Obama highlighted Sitka schools on technology. Mm. Yeah. Now, do we have Mary in the audience? Yeah, we do. 
So don't call anybody out, but maybe we can get a little bit more info on this. Yeah. Can you? I'd like you to look in my eyes while you say yeah. things that aren't true about. Can you tell us about this? I'm oh, not this is the answer your questions about public this. media. No. Okay. But I don't believe that you are presenting this the way that it was intended. So I'm going to just have Stan and I'm not here to look at me in the eyes. Yes. While I, you this is tell public media. Truths. This is Alaska public media. I'm not even saying anything. President Obama highlights it. This is in the newspaper article online from the public media. Yes, that's true. Yeah, okay. So I want I, to hear what you have to say about it. Yeah, I haven't even said anything yet, other than Obama highlighted the school. And you were applauded. And I'd like to know what this is about because what I researched, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, because this Connect All Schools seems to be connected to this Connect Ed. From what I am, so this got us internet in the classrooms, correct? I want to hear what you have to say. Did, did this get us internet in the classrooms? I'm not here to answer your questions, I'm here to listen, and I want to hear what you have to say. I just want you if, to If you'd like to say me. anything, you're welcome to, okay? I'd like to at least let you know that you're welcome, because we had the president and the vice president of the Matt School School Board in Palmer, and I let them speak, and I tried to get the people to work together, and it, it worked well there, okay? But what, I, what our research, mine and other people, not the representatives necessarily, but other people who are helping me with research, has shown that certain people, and I'm not saying this is you, this is other people, want to connect all U.S. schools with the world by 2016. This is, again, off their website. I'm not making, you know, it's just off the website. And here are some of the lessons they're doing, okay? Students could easily see North America with one student and many cupcakes, it wasn't um, marshmallows or cupcakes, and Africa with far fewer cupcakes than people. In other words, that was where they had the chairs representing how many people lived there, the cupcakes, how much they consume as far as houses and cars and stuff. And they realized luxury in everyday North American life that is easily taken for granted and hard to justify. And this appears to be Obama's agenda I'm not saying it's yours that you had anything Thank you for clarifying. to do with, I don't think that you dislike the kids. I think you probably are doing your job because you love the kids here in Sitka, because you see them, you know them. And this is to expose a broader agenda from people who aren't here, who don't know these kids, who are forcing things upon local people. Okay, this is all about helping the parent help their local officials to push back against an agenda that's coming down from other people, okay? So I, I wanna make clear, I'm not saying anything negative about you, but when Obama is putting your name on the public media, it's associating you with this, mm -hmm. and we wanna help you to recognize and make sure that your name stays clear, okay? Can I, can I clarify? Yes. So you said that Connect Ed, can you clarify, it's hard to follow all these things. So Connect, they, they Ed, is a, Connect Ed is a White House, you can go to the White House website, and it's the U.S. Department of State, I believe, is, is in with it, with the White House, a program, they want all of the schools to be connected, in other words, internet access. That's wrong. Which schools? Every school in America. In America. Is the goal by, I forget what the date was, 7, 2017. Wait. It's it's going to world by 2016. Oh, so shouldn't it be volunteer yeah. if you want your kids to be connected with them? Should you, and that should goes that back to the question of should my six-year-old be on a computer? Yeah. Bring a piece of paper and you sign it like the old days and say, yes, you have my permission to do this. If you don't have my permission, then you don't do this stuff. And you don't say that this is for all the students. Well, if you as the parents want that, then I would say, yeah, because we'll get to the... I, or is it in here, the Supreme Court case that says, well, as the federal statute says, that the education should be decided by the parents. Yeah. So Not even the state legislature should decide the specifics of what goes on in the schools, the Supreme Court has held. Uh, they actually struck down a law, I think it was Oregon from the 1922 or so. It's right after, it was a result of World War I, the state legislature passed a thing saying, we want to homogenize our kids because those darn Germans over there just caused a ruckus. <laughs> we don't want to have German Nazi kids. It wasn't Nazi, by the way. Second Reich, I guess, in our classroom, but it was Oregon. So we're going to homogenize, and you can't teach German in the schools. The Supreme Court said no. If the parents want their kids to learn German, if the kids want to learn German, if the teachers want to teach German, that's up to the local schools. So that's exactly right. And this is my point of bringing this up, is that you should work with the people here to find out what they want in the schools. 
and Obama doesn't have anything to do with it. The executive, whether it's Bush, Obama, I don't care which president it is, the Supreme Court has said they don't have anything to do and, with and it. And I'm objecting to that statement because that's an assumption. I'm, I'm saying... That I haven't done that. No, I didn't say that. I said you yes, should. Yes, you did. And I that's should. what I'm objecting to. We can play back the recording, but you should in the future, and that's what I'm here to help encourage the people work together with their local officials. It's all about local government. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you're saying the school shouldn't have internet access? I didn't say that at all. No. So that's what, what yeah, that's, that's, that's what the saying. connection. That's that's parents need to decide, why does internet. the school have internet access? What's gonna happen with that internet? What's the purpose of it? Because this connect off the let me just go forward and we'll see one of the things that happens with schools having internet access. And it's, it's a dangerous thing to let kids loose with the internet. We all know all the different content that's on the internet. Yeah. Of course, under teacher supervision, parental supervision, that's a different thing. <laughs> and district uh, supervision. I was in high school in computer class, thank you. Okay, well. <laughs> so, and so internet I don't live here, so it's not my school, so that's why I'm just presenting what the law internet. is and saying that the people whose kids are in their school, because that's what the... Yeah, internet uh, in the classroom is not a free-for-all. What it's costs very money? locked down. Oh, I'm sorry. It, oh, you mean it's not open access? Yeah, it's not. Kids can't go, at least in my classroom. That's not true. <laughs> well, in my classroom, in our district, they could not get to sites that were locked down. And part of Common Core, too, that not on these slides, but has been students creating Wikipedia <coughs> articles. I find rather odd that a child in school would be writing, here's what this is all about. Somebody's supposed to be learning is actually teaching. I don't know that Sitka's doing that. I don't know Alaska's doing that. It's just one of the things. So connect, Ed, help us connect all schools. Here's some of the assignments under these programs that is, and we'll, we'll see who's putting this out. <coughs> but I think everybody in here can agree that it is not hard to justify the wealth in America because we've worked for it, right? We haven't stolen anything from Africa or any other country, right? Yeah. You're working, you're working. Working, as far as I know. <laughs> so, to teach our kids, is anybody in here, would you like to teach our kids that we shouldn't take for granted? It's hard to justify the wealth that we have in America, in Alaska? I don't, I would, I would assume not. Right? Where is this? This is from here. It's from, an, and this is an, yes. their yes. blog, an article? No, no, no this is I'm a- I'm sorry. This is a program, I'll be getting to the next, this, so this is an organization that's working with the schools here. Qatar Foundation International and the U.S. Department of Education. The U.S. Department of Education is a partner in this initiative, okay? okay. Head Office of Educational Technology, Shared Department's Vision, 21st Century Schools, launch of Connect Ed. So that's my connection, okay? So there, the executive administration in power now in Washington is saying to all the schools in America, you need to be connected. Then they have, the USDOE has this program. The US Department of State is part of it as well. Remember, so we have the DOE and the Department of State. Who's the head of the Department of State now? Kerry, right, I believe he's still I think yeah. he was. <laughs> He's still okay. We'll get to him. And then another partner in this is the KTAR Foundation International. If you look up them on the CIA World Factbook or Wikipedia or anywhere, you'll find that it says Sharia Law Country. Mm -hmm. Here's President Obama honored this school district because it's been transformative. This is KTAR operates under Sharia Law which treats women very nicely, we understand. I'd like to know what connection you're making between me and Sharia law. Not between you and Sharia law. You just did. And I'd like to have it explicitly stated. No, he did. I didn't even come close to me. Say that Obama, the executive branch, is pushing this on all the schools, including the Sitka schools. Nothing about you. It is so not an accurate projection, that's all I'll have to say. And you may... No, say anything you want. I, I would be happy to talk about it with anybody that would like to come to my office and talk about it one on one. But the way that you are projecting, and if it you is, want some, if you want a few minutes here to to say your complete mind, that's 
because this is not about attacking you at all, okay? This is about attacking other people who are, are pushing you things. You are attacking my judgment. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. And everyone's allowed yeah. to question yeah. your judgment. Nathan, and if there's anything that you think is not true, please. There's a different, that when yeah. you connect it with ways that are not truthful, and you attack, it attacks me as a professional, that's slanderous. This, if there's anything that's not true, please. If you connect the dots, they don't lie. That's the problem. That Those aren't the dots. Well, I'm sorry, I should not have said anything at all. This, this, if anybody if wants you have to anything to say, you're free to say anything, okay? <laughs> Could you retrace the steps? For, like we're talking about connecting the dots. Could you retrace the steps? You're saying that our district has accepted technology funds, which I believe is true. So, and we do have internet. We've had internet prior to this. So I'm not sure what this Obama thing is that he's saying that Sitka has done something to get this connect ed stuff. Okay, not so true. you're saying not true. We not haven't gotten connect ed. Sitka got called out because of the work we did six years ago. Those are the dots you're not connecting correctly. This is November 20th of 2000. I didn't make this. Alaska Public Media put this out. Okay? He got called out for the work he did six years ago. It's, this article says that it's connected. So if it's not, please tell us. Nathan, is, like are you saying that Obama has a Connect Ed program? That if we are internet accessible, we can access Connect Ed? It, it appears to be that way. I'm saying here's some articles that appear to say so that Obama's saying that we're in some internet, White House program. We can access ConnectEd. And then it <laughs> and what is ConnectEd? Can you reiterate that and explain it? So the superintendent summit is part of the White House's ConnectEd initiative, which aims to bring high-speed internet access to every school in America. So Obama wants every school to have high-speed internet access is what I'm getting from this article. And that he wants it to be used to connect all the schools with the world by 2016, because this says that this is part of the U.S. Department of Education, U.S. Department of State, that they, not you, that they are working with the Star Foundation International. Mm -hmm. And that KTAR operates under Sharia law, and they are beaming classrooms around the country, and it would appear to me that classrooms in Sitka might be beamed and have video conferencing with Katari. Are they? So even though we may not currently, we would not uh, No, I'm asking. I don't know. Uh, I haven't uh, been in a classroom here. I, I am recording this, and I will review it with my lawyer afterwards, because this is abominable what you're saying. I'm asking you to say whatever you want to clarify. We're trying to research and find out. Is there, I get this stuff from parents across the state asking me to find out what's going on. Because the parents around the state are thinking that classrooms here might be beaming because we have stuff online that says the classrooms in the U.S. You're aren't video conferencing. You're going to be an office and all the value of some polite about this, but mm -hmm. quit trying to court her. She works for the city, for the, us people here, the parents yeah. here. She doesn't, she we doesn't don't have to answer to her. She has to answer to us, but let's hear the rest of the thing. We're getting yeah. involved now. We've got to wrap up, Nathan. Yeah. 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 We'll pass time. And so there's all this promotion that One World Now is one of the sponsors. So these are the partners of this connect thing and they're promoting you know I studied abroad okay I'm not against study abroad I even worked abroad but this stuff social entrepreneur potential to change patterns across society this is social engineering it is yeah it really is this guy <laughs> here is one of the he's a youth leadership manager and you can find him on Facebook promoting that water is a right. And remember, the United Nations went after the city of Detroit when they shut down people's water for not paying the water bill, saying that that's violating UN law because people have a right to free water. That's not the way our Constitution works. Key supporters of this, of course, are the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Which the Fordham and, uh, Street Foundation, wasn't Fordham one of the ones before who said the Bill Gates thing is the, the agenda. Is the agenda. So the, and here's John Kerry, and that's the leader of KTAR. Uh, I think this is the guy, uh, the leader of KTAR. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, anyway, next week. so this is what concerns parents across. I didn't come up with this. Parents sent this to me and said, what's going on here? 
it looks like the Obama executive is forcing on all the states, which they admit to on the White House website, saying we want all of the schools to be connected, and here's why we want them connected. I'm not saying anything that you want this, okay? This isn't something that you want. I'm pretty sure you don't want this stuff, I would imagine. And if you do, it's up to you and your parents, and I don't have anything to do with that. What the issue is, is that other people outside of Alaska, outside of Sitka, even outside of this country, Qatar is outside of this country, obviously, are pushing this. And this website previously here said that they already have these classrooms from around the United States linked with mm -hmm. these classrooms mm -hmm. in Qatar. And they're talking about how the United States has too much money and too much resources, and we need to level the playing field and give some more to other people and take away from us. Yeah. All and that's why you. parents around Alaska are concerned about this connectivity, besides the fact uh, things that you mentioned about not wanting your kids to be on the computer. I had paper textbooks. And it's all this connectivity is amazing, too, as, as you're speaking, with all the schools being afforded to have Apple computers, who owns Apple computers? Yeah. Uh, I mean, this has been out, coming on for a long time. Right, and the, the LA Unified School District spent, there, it was a debacle as to how much money they spent on iPads. But then, then somebody was actually making money off of it because they sold them, you know, they skinned, or it's just unbelievable. So th there are various issues why we might not want our yeah. schools connected. My kids aren't gonna go to this school. If you want to connect it, if you don't, you guys decide. That's the whole point, that somebody in Washington, D.C. shouldn't decide. So, uh, I just, I want to bring this up now. Yeah. I, I personally don't have anything wrong against the schools having the internet. I just, I'm just saying, I've seen what really happens. Abuses and you want to, <laughs> yeah. be careful with that. I knew right? some kids who knew how to write programs, and so yeah. they'd know exactly where all the teachers' keystrokes were, so they'd get all the passwords and go through everything. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've seen some crazy. The kids are smart. My yeah. website was just happening. <laughs> if you go to my website now, it goes to some selling online pharmaceuticals. Like, <laughs> and again, as far as establishing and maintaining a system of public schools, it's up to the state legislature. Again, not the executive branch of the federal government. So the local school board should be working with the people and with the state. But again, you don't have to care what I say. You can. He was one of the guys who wrote the declaration and had input into the Constitution. What does he say? Who should be running our schools? States. And not even the states. That's why. Yeah. Our local community. People like this guy whose kids in it. Yeah. That's right. Parents. And what happened when you were a kid, Brent? When you were at least a little kid in grade school. Well, they consolidated the schools, but uh, prior to that, prior, yeah, prior to that, it was uh, six fathers from each district. According to the dictates of the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, land was allocated every six square miles, and those schools existed until the 1950s and 60s. But in those districts, six fathers were chosen to choose the textbooks and hire the teacher, and the teacher chose it with them. And my grandfather was a teacher, 27 years in those local schools, one-year contracts. And when the consolidation occurred, he fought with them because he knew they would no longer be able to choose the textbooks. And he knew it would be central control. And central control is contrary to freedom. Mm -hmm. That's why you have courthouses. <coughs> but again, that was a good system. and. Uh, my father didn't go to high school, but he's the smartest man I know yesterday. <laughs> and the older I get, the more I see it. He had a classic education by the time he got to eighth grade, because he used the old readers, plus other things. So we've gotten to the violations and the Sharia law situation that appears to be being pushed down across the country touches on this subversion. This comes out of Common Core Aligned. And again, the Common Core is not exactly the textbooks, but the textbooks are now aligned to the Common Core. And they're written by publishers such as Pearson that are partly owned by Qatar 
foundation, right? Pearson, come on. Three yes. percent. Yes, uh, Libyan. Libyan. It's, Libyan. it's it's twenty five million shares, and you can go to Pearson International and find it all. It's also posted on Alaska.com, but they have twenty five million shares, which I believe is between three and four percent. Yeah, I heard it's about three. Libyan authority. <clears throat> So, we have two issues with this first quote. Yeah. Anybody point out these two issues? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> two, two main sort of themes. It's kind of inaccurate. It's inaccurate, but in, in what ways? Well, it says you can only arm, bear arms if you're in a militia. Militia? Yes. And the other one's a little bit more subtle, especially if you're a school child. It's this first word. France. France. Yeah. Yeah. France. Yeah. The Second Amendment grants people rights. No. And some of these I've heard from parents in South Central Alaska. It's in their kids' textbooks in the Anchorage Matsu area. Wow. The Supreme Court had a chance to rule on this issue in 08 and then again in 2010. This is the DC gun ban case. It's still going on. They still haven't complied with the Supreme Court law. And Chicago was the other one. And so the Supreme Court said it's an individual right. And it protects, not grants, protects the individual right unconnected with service and emotion. This was just one example of a rewriting of our rights. And Brent, do you want to touch on, oh, we have to wrap up, okay. Real quick. Rights or are they duties, responsibilities? Rights. I've always heard it said that every right is accompanied by a duty. It is untrue. Every right is a duty. And every time you see the word right, look for the duty. It's an old Anglo word, it's been hijacked, but when it was put in our Constitution, people understood it this way. They understood it in the old Germanic sense of the word. I'm a word man. Words carry high importance. A right is a duty. You have the duty, you have the right to free speech, and the flip side of that right is the right to Silence. Those two rights are flip side of the same right of governance over your tongue. That is a duty to know when to speak and when not to speak. And it's your individual discernment, and it's one of those duties, just as an example, that no one can take from you. Nobody can make you talk. You can be killed, and there have been hundreds of thousands of people in the history of the world who have been killed because they refused to talk. Mm -hmm. This is huge stuff. Don't take this stuff lightly. This stuff. The protection of our rights in the Constitution. A right is a duty, and there are no rights in this world, never have been, never will be, but individual rights. There are no societal rights. There are no corporate rights. Rights are only vindicated one instance at a time, person by person, in our courts, because our courts know that rights are individual. To even argue about it is futile and foolish and childish. <clears throat> Remember it. And the word right means responsibility. That's the old meaning of the whole word. The Germanic people have another word for right as a, a selfish kind of a word. We've hijacked it into a selfish concept. It is not. It's a very important duty, and a duty always carries with it individual discernment. And the same is true here with the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, all of the amendments. Find the duty when you see the word right. Well, here are some of the other rights that our students have. And this, in the handouts, it shows you this is from New York State Common Core Aligned Curriculum. That's, that's more of a wrong than a right. Yeah. <laughs> this is taught in. Under Common Court, you know, New York State, this one's from. And I know Alaska participates in the Model United Nations. It's online, you can find out. So that's what I call subversion of our Constitution, where they're rewriting our Bill of Rights and they're teaching this. And of course, as we spoke, our Declaration says that our Creator gave us our rights, not the United Nations, not the Constitution, our Creator, and that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. 
seems that the government isn't consenting right now to what's going on, and yet they're being railroaded. And that's where we start getting to the call to action, or you know, what can I do about it? That was one of the questions we had. What can I do about it? We touched on the traditional view versus the common core view, and again, I said in the beginning, this is a worldview issue. What's the purpose of education? Mm -hmm. Is it to teach certain facts, skill sets, how to use an iPhone? What would he say if we had him here today? Principles of freedom. Freedom. You want your kids to be free, don't you? That's right. And a free person is going to find out whatever, you know, you learn more. I know I learned more after school than I did in school. I learned a whole lot in school. Mm -hmm. My kids are going to be educated. But I learned a whole lot more. You were just talking about that. How much you've learned since you graduated even from law school. Well, we had an engineer tell us the other night he was graduated from Stanford University. An engineer, he's in his 60s now, and he said, my time at Stanford just taught me to learn. And I've been learning ever since. He said he didn't learn much there, frankly, <coughs> compared to what he's learned since. I said, that's it. That's the good purpose. Noah Webster was the first American educator who wrote the American English Language Dictionary. And why do we need a dictionary of the American English Language? Why don't we use the Oxford English Dictionary? Well, we had some of these definitions earlier of how they've rewritten words, but words mean a different thing depending on your system of government, your worldview. Yeah. To somebody in England, a lord is different than somebody in America. Right? Mm -hmm. We don't have lords in the sense of this. And he, of course, wrote the Blueback Speller. And he says it's about what? Liberty and virtue. And somebody earlier, we wrote it down, that I would teach my kids. Virtue wasn't the word, but it was a word similar to virtue. Values, virtue. Right, you have the word? No. But in, in, in any event, it was yeah. looking what Noah Webster says we ought to teach. And with an inviolable attachment to their own country. Not to be global citizens, yeah. but to be American citizens. Mm -hmm. Alaskan citizens first, if you're here, yes. and American citizens. And I, again, you know, my wife is from Brazil. We met in Germany. I worked in Germany. I went to school in Germany. I don't have any issue that Connect Ed thing. One of the things they said, the homeschool parents don't know about all this going abroad stuff. I went abroad, my first two kids were born abroad. And I brought them back here because I'm an American, because this country is different. I have an inviolable attachment to my own country. I respect other countries, but I'm an American. Again, liberty, this is the second father of traditional American education, the father of American psychiatry. He was also a member of the clergy. Without learning, men are incapable of knowing their responsibilities, right? Their rights, because their rights are their duties, Frontier said. In other words, the reason it's in the state constitution that the legislature needs to establish and maintain a system of public schools is because the state has an interest in kids knowing their rights and their duties to be good citizens. And if you're learning the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that you have a right to health care and a house, that's in conflict with our Constitution. Again, U.S. Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan, originally Chicago. We have to educate our way to a better economy. So on the one hand, there's the worldview that says education is about liberty, knowing your rights and your duties. On the other hand, it's all about a better economy. Because we all know that rich people are happier Right? <laughs> I have yet to get anybody to agree with that. <laughs> well, it's rich, it's working people are happier. Productive people are happier. That, I would say, is true. People who produce, and that's actually, studies show that job fulfillment, or satisfaction in your job, is a better motivator than increasing the wages. When I was working as a lawyer in Germany, I worked with banks, and they had all these bankers who were like 25 years old, making a million dollars a year, and they all quit. I said, you're making like a million bucks a year, you're 25, why are you quitting? I said, because I'm not doing anything. This is all a big joke. And they weren't happy. They knew that it was fake, and it didn't last. So if you want to say that it's about educating our way to a better economy, my experience shows that ain't going to work. Again, we have this social justice. This, again, is the U.S. Secretary of Education. So 
social justice, the data, remember all that data collection, it's not gonna lie, but it won't tell the whole truth. And it's gonna be used to shut down schools. What can we do? Yeah. How is that even possible in a place like Sitka? To shut down schools? How is that even possible? I, I didn't, maybe they won't be shutting down in here, I don't know, but <laughs> across the country he says, he says, in the months and years ahead, we will ask thousands of communities across America to close and reopen schools based on data showing that they are underperforming. Yeah, but that won't work here. The representative said that 95% in Eagle River was a failure, right? Because it's supposed to be 100%. Yeah, and the forest started over I mean, that is, that right, that's just stupid, because that won't work They've been work consolidating. Here. And it won't work in many places. It won't work. You can't just shut down the school. What are you going to do with your kid? Who's, where, who else is going to teach? Well, and that's the question that the local people need to say. If we put in the schools the textbooks that we want, and the state says, well, we're not going to give you your money. Yeah. Are they going to shut down the school? Uh, yes. If you say we're using <coughs> They don't have the legal authority. We've seen here, right? Do they have the legal authority to do it? No. 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 Are they really going to close your school if you use the textbooks you used 20 years ago? <coughs> How much does it cost? Well, you could just dig up the old ones, go buy them on. I bought old books for my kids. For like 99 cents on Amazon. It's a lot cheaper than the textbook. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of books, yeah. that's where we got interested with a discussion with David Barton we saw. Yeah. And he was the book guy yeah. from Texas where they print the books. Right. And what shocked him, he literally read it and said, oh my God, they're going to print this? Had he not read it? I'll bet you it's in these schools right here. And it was having to do with the Sharia law and this other crap that they put in there. Teachers and anchors. They've changed. They've changed the reading. Pull they've changed the yeah. work. And on today on Facebook, and you can take that word out. Put that word in there. Classroom to classroom. That's an issue. I mean, I have come on. With digital books. If you believe in it, and you, they can be changed instantly. There you are. And that happened to me. I was reading the Christmas account out of the Gospel of Luke to my kids at Christmas time, and the next night I went to read it again. And it was different. It was different than what I recited as a kid when I was a little kid and did the yeah. Christmas Eve service because they changed from the 1984 NIV to the 2011 NIV overnight. The one vanished off my iPad, my wow. gateway app. The new one was there. And that's where I said, Whoa. I'm going to start buying paper books. Buying book. yeah. Have you seen this? I have not seen it. Okay. The only way you can get this is you can't. You can go on Google. Piece of paper. It's a piece of paper. <laughs> but you can have that. Yeah. But uh, that's Colin Core and Tear. C A I R. A connection with Tear. Connection with. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's the one you want to Google up. Yes. But the only way you can get you it. You can't Google it up. You can't Google it up. You got to go to Google and type in Star Page. And on Star Page, you can go in. Star Page search engine. Yes. Star, yes. That's what I use. Okay. And then uh, there you can go into it. If you go Alaska, uh, Common Core Alaska Schools, where or vice versa, and then all of a sudden it'll bring it right on there. And I am absolutely disgusted that any of our schools are having anything to do with this Common Core at all. If we're going to be affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood, I have a problem with it. They say they're now in Wasilla, where I live. Yeah. Well, I tell you what the schools can do. And I think a lot of the people don't know about it. And they the, don't. The teachers no. don't know about it. The no. administrators no. don't know about it. No. That's the sad thing. And I love that's what I'm trying to say here, here that it's, yeah. it's not worth. And we don't know about it because it's, it's hard to find. You have yeah. to, you have to I get it. I went to school where he goes, well, remember, all villages raise your children. And I looked at him yeah. in November and in November 13th. And I said, you weren't here to change my kids' diapers or take them to the hospital. Don't you dare sit there and say that. So the. <laughs> what I would suggest, uh, from what the Supreme Court has said, is that the local people work together and help the local politicians. And that's yes. what we've started to do in the Matt Sioux, yeah. where we had the president and the vice president of the school board. And that was my intention with you, ma'am. I apologize for offending you, because there we had them. The parents were yelling at them a little, and I tried to intervene and say, no, they, they want to help your kids. They Things are being pushed on them. And they said, we're told we have to do this. And I said, let's work together and help them to, sh to know what they, their rights are and their duties are. Because this is a big push from <coughs> people who are more powerful than all of us. Yeah. Except that, just like the Founding Fathers said, 
we can do it. Because I know we have some great teachers in this town. Yes. And if they're getting the thumb put on them, that's sad. The teachers I met who came to speak in Anchorage were Wonderful. excellent people. Yeah. And and the, the president and the vice president met to the school board. They, they were feeling like they didn't have a choice. So with the parents help, and then, and then we got the borough assembly involved, and the Matsu borough mayor, yeah. to say how can we support the local schools, work with the parents, what books do we want in the classrooms, yeah. books that teach the Constitution, the real American books like we had years ago, and what's gonna happen if, if all the parents and all the teachers and all the local school administrators say these are the books we're gonna have in our classrooms. Is Deed gonna say, well then you're not gonna get our money? He'd be violating the law. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of that going on. Maybe it's going to go to court then. Well, if it I goes to court, know. is the judge going to rule? Well, we know how the judge in Missouri rules. I'm going to lie. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Nope. So, did you guys enjoy him? Yes. 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 Wasn't he amazing? Yeah. So, really want to thank them. They are they are here on their own dime, and um, I'm going to do a call to action. What I was trying to do is pull up Pearson.com. So I, I'm going to challenge you guys tonight before you go to bed. Please just go to Pearson.com. All right. Pearson owns things like Power School. So if you think that oh this is you know. It, it's a big deal. There's connection after connection after connection after connection. We were able to get in all the organizations Gates is sprinkling funding into. We're not able to show you all the, the, the reaching out over here, where the investment over here, and then there's Gates products, Gates software, etc. you know, being, being used. We, you just need to do all that stuff yourself. You need to connect the dots. You need to. So um, go ahead. I'm, and then I... I Go ahead. I actually have been doing that and um, you know doing my own research on yeah. this and and when you start looking at it, it I mean this is your guys presentation gets pretty riled up and scared enough as it is but I mean I I've, this has been heavy on my heart lately because of what I've seen from other people and what is really going on and, and the paper trail that basically you know people are trying to get rich and further their political agenda at the expense of our children. Mm -hmm. And, well, and it, it, it becomes point. pretty obvious yeah. once you start putting the dots all together. So what can you do? First of all, can you hold up your son? <laughs> <laughs> What's this about? Why am I here? Okay? <laughs> this is why I am here. The there children. I'm, I truly, we truly are here. Like I believe many of you are. What is yeah. going on? There is a war for their yeah. minds. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. It's a war for the minds of the youth, okay? So what can you do? It's very, very important. First, educate yourself. Knowledge is power. I've been on this for four and a half years. Two years I was neutral, just trying to figure out what it was. For two and a half years, I thought as a legislator, you guys go to work, you raise your kids, don't worry. This is my job. I'll help take care of education policy. Will you see why I can't, okay? I, I'm trying, we're doing our best. We got a prohibition in. We're going around the state empowering the people. It's you, these, these are your kids, these are your grandkids, these are, this is your community. You need to equip yourself with knowledge, okay? So know what you're talking about. And there, we're, we have flyers back there, but American Principles Project, if you wanna get deep into it, that's an organization. A local one that is very anti-Common Core is 147 degrees west. If you want quick, quick, quick um, Facebook, just you only have a few minutes a day, just sign up for quick alerts on Facebook. Americans Against Common Core, Patriots Against Common Core, Alaskans Against Common Core. There's thousands of them out there, okay? Just, just you can get really quick updates. <coughs> know who your State Board of Education, it was not us, it was Commissioner Hanley, Indeed, Les Morse, all those guys who signed all of, uh, it's a state's rights issue to me. He signed off on this. He, the buck stops with Parnell and with Hanley, now it is with Walker, so I'm gonna give you Walker's uh, phone number. I just looked it up for you guys. It's 269-7450. Call his office. Unfortunately, he he ha he doesn't have his his um his number on there. I had to I had to look it up. 
when you go to one website you need to remember is alaska.gov alaska.gov you can look me up you can look war legislator we're going to be changing i mean every two years there's elections but go to um, stateofalaska.gov or just alaska.gov there's a state of alaska employees directory so if you want to look up commissioner hanley and let him have it do it okay you guys if you want in this day and age if you want your government to leave you alone do not leave your government alone period there's too much power struggles going on right now their State Board of Education is meeting right now. If you can attend or get follow-up, tell them you don't like it. Yeah. I fought yesterday morning against Esther Cox, and I'm fighting with all my heart against Commissioner Hanley right now. I, I did a face-to-face -face with Hanley in the governor's office, okay? I, I, but he, it, it's not penetrating. We need thousands of people to be calling, okay? okay. And, I give, and, you, and, and I believe this is Governor Walker's email. I can't believe he doesn't have it on, on, his, on his, when you go to Alaska.gov, but I believe it's governor at Alaska.gov. So governor at alaska.gov, I believe is, is, is his. If not, I know the 2697450. You are now, the candle of knowledge has been lit. It is now your responsibility to go light other candles. Educate them, educate yourself, whatever you're comfortable with, but you have got to spread the knowledge, okay? This is, we are, we're here to empower you. This is your community. And I think it's, it's very, very important for you to stand up to people on the school board, to people on the State Board of Education, because really it's the State Board of Education more than anybody else in its deed. Deed is not, I believe they're, they're breaking the law right now by forcing districts to do things that they should not have the, the authority to be doing. That's for you to decide. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a court, but from what I can tell, 278, House Bill 278 says, you cannot deed the Department of Education's winning money that's funneled through them that money cannot be sent, spent on a set of education standards that were developed by the Common Core. I mean, to me, it's as clear as day, okay? So you guys need to know that the law is in your hand. I did my job. I did what I could. You just need to empower yourself with that knowledge. Just like, I'm going to go back to, to uh, why I've had 23 interviews with TV stations, radio stations, newspapers, the last 48 hours because of what I did. I stood on my principle. My commitment to my people took precedent. My, when I swore <coughs> to uphold the Constitution, it was more important to me than an unwritten caucus rule that we really didn't know what was going to happen. There's four principles that we developed in my caucus. They were to live within our means. They were to plan and save for future generations. They were to develop a long-range plan. And they were to identify core government functions and priorities. How is spending three to four billion dollars a year extra on top of everything we bring in living within our means? It's not. It's not. To do harm. Exactly. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying the, the, the key is I stuck with the principles of the caucus, okay? Not a stupid rule. And if you look at the rule now that I'm on the outside, it says we will give you positions of power as long as we can have unlimited access to all the savings and all the revenues. Now that rule looks ridiculous to me. When you're so involved in the po politics, sometimes you, you're suffocated by things that are going on. You finally break free and you see what's happened. That's why I, my vote on the House floor was for the people, the commitments that I made to my people to limit government spending and limit, limit government involvement in their lives. That's why I pushed the no button, okay? Is it uncomfortable right now? Oh yeah, without staff, stripped of power. But guess what? I have a voice around the state now. It's nothing that I ever thought would have happened, okay? With a three minute floor speech. But 23 interviews within the last 48 hours, okay? If you wanna watch me on channel two, I will be on there 10.30 to show my rebuttal to the leadership that I voted on principle. Integrity matters, integrity matters, okay? So with that, I'm asking you, please, stand on your constitution. Stand on what you believe in. Do your own research. Please go empower the people. And I'm going to read a quote. I'm going to give this book. It's called The Cult of Common Core. It's kind of a controversial title. This exposes the myths of the Common Core. So if you didn't catch everything, it's taken me thousands of hours to learn what I know. Thousands. Because I've decided this is my number one priority. Those children, the war for their minds is more important to me than anything else right now, okay? There's a thousand other things I could be doing, okay? But this is the most important thing. 
I'm going to give anybody, uh, if, as many as we have, we're going to give these books out. You can order them. We have them stacked up here. Um, but uh, we're going to give this, this out right now. This is written by a teacher, a teacher that was part of the park development and things like that. He, he finally couldn't. Teachers are finally speaking out. You'll find their videos all over. They're being oppressed. Parents are being told that they can't. You can opt out. Empower yourself with knowledge and go speak the truth. But this book, you can get on Amazon for about $6. And it's called The Cult of Calm Core. And it basically exposes all the, the myths of the Common Core. One thing that is incorrect in this book, it says Alaska's not doing Common Core because everyone was telling them they weren't doing Common Core. We are doing Common Core, okay? Um, and so so that's that's the one thing I've um, asked my staff to please write an email and, and, um, and, and tell them to please. Alaska is doing the Common Core. But the bigger picture is this is a teacher that his heart is bleeding for the students. There's teacher after teacher after teacher. There's video after video after teachers quitting. I don't want teachers to quit. We need them. It's one of the most important jobs in the world. You'll watch the teacher, um, that Ripley, you know, Ke Kelly Ripa, that show. I don't watch it anymore, but the teacher of the year on that program quit on the spot right after she got it exposing Common Core. People are speaking out against it everywhere. You have a voice. You need to use it mm -hmm. to fight for our youth. Mm -hmm. Yes. I met, uh, we were down in Portside, Arizona, uh -huh. where there's about a million people that come from all over the United States. And there was teachers there that have just quit because of the Common Core. They are. They're quitting they across the nation. But it. that's kind of, just know, in it, if you read the waiver, there's so much more. It would literally take me hours to tell you there's teacher equity, social equity. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff. And it's scaring me. I'm fearful for the teachers right now. That's yeah. another reason I'm here, for the teachers. Yeah. But I'm going to close with this one thing, and we will stay as long as, as, long as you would like. But I am, I'm going to read a dedication from this book to you. This book is dedicated to all you mama grizzlies. I'm, I'm ad-libbing just a little bit. Papa grizzlies, grandma grizzlies, grandpa grizzlies, baby grizzlies. This book is for you who first sensed the danger posed by the cult of common core to our children. You refused to retreat. You refused to be quiet. And you continue to fight fearlessly to protect our children, to protect our country. You are the inspiration. With that, thank you for coming. Uh -huh.